can sum up the tonal dissonance of Disney Star Wars with one line of dialogue from the galaxy's most feared bounty hunter. That was a little heavy handed, don't you think? Remember that this was the guy who Darth Vader had to rein in in Empire Strikes Back. The guy who almost shot Chewbacca after Vader told him not to. I want them alive, no disintegration, so the crime lord bounty hunter will just let some brats call him an old man and then tell him to return to his palace. You're a crime boss, not a social worker. I think you need to be reminded of that. Because Boba Fett is becoming the background character to his own show. I mean, hell, Fennec Shand is acting more like Boba Fett than Boba Fett. And speaking of Fennec Shand, I'm expecting a double cross from her very soon. And before we get to that, I'm prepared for the obligatory Star Wars fans to type in my comment section, actually Mannix, don't you know, we're supposed to eat the shit directly out of Disney's arsehole. <laughs> Shut your mouth. If you're looking for someone to lie to you, go watch those run of the mill YouTube channels who pretend everything is perfect so they can then be allowed access by Disney but if you want someone to tell you the truth go speak with your daddy who probably wishes you were left on the bed sheets haha <laughs> this isn't a safe space where you can cope and seethe and hold hands together kumbaya this is a place where you will swallow my load of truth and there's nothing you can do about it hit the like button and subscribe baby Disney may be the company that gave me the Lion King but they're all also the company that gave us the Jonas Brothers and Hannah Montana. And of course, how can I forget the sequel trilogy? Now, after episode two of the book of Boba Fett, I was feeling somewhat optimistic it was a great episode, but episode three really took a step back quality-wise. Boba Fett's adoptive Tuscan tribe were annihilated so fast and easily. So much for them coming back later on, although I did not see the female Tuscan Raider. So maybe she'll return, who knows? But the Tuscan Raiders being slaughtered reminded me of the early killing of Snoke in The Last Jedi. Sure, it was unexpected, no doubt, but what an immense waste of dramatic and emotional potential. They dropped the ball there. However, those whole scenes with Boba Fett burning the bodies was well shot. I'm actually surprised. Which is more than I can say for episode one. This episode had little to no Star Wars feel at all. The music, the Vespers, the spy kids clothes and the dialogue. Oh, the dialogue was so strange. And by the way, those Vespers are way too shiny for a Mos Espa teenage street gang. Teenagers and Boba Fett do not go together. Those space hipster BMX bandits were so aesthetically out of place in Star Wars, especially on Tatooine of all places. I could perhaps understand on Coruscant, but not Tatooine. Not to mention, they look like Power Rangers. Go, go, Boba Fett Rangers! You know what? At this point, Disney Star Wars would be lucky to have Power Rangers in their franchise. Anyway, that was the slowest chase scene in a movie since Austin Powers got stuck in that tunnel. It literally made me laugh out loud because it was playing. Very hype music, like it was a crazy chase scene. But in actual fact, they were going like 16 miles an hour in these extremely out of place vibrant bikes. You know, that is something George Lucas probably would have done in the prequels anyway. But like I said, this would have been perfectly fine on Coruscant or some other city world. It still would be goofy as f but at least it would fit in. But not only that, in this episode, the Power Rangers gang said they were out of work and can barely afford water. But yet they can afford these tricked out hover bikes and cybernetic implants. Make that make sense. Anyway, let's move on to the Black Croissant or whatever the fuck his name is. We'll call him BK for now. That BK fight was so underwhelming. How Boba Fett ate all of those punches and was fine. But in episode one, he had to be rush to the back to tank after those assassins try to kill him. Give me a break. This show has some really weird production going on. They get some things really right and then others are like totally uncanny valley in how off they are. For example, why BK didn't take 
any weapons with him to kill Boba Fett. You are going after a crime lord. You should be armed to the fangs, my Wookiee friend. And then when the black croissant awkwardly started running off camera after that stupid fight, I once again couldn't stop laughing. I mean, that was comically bad. The only way you could have saved that is if he ripped that awful Power Rangers gang apart. That way you could have killed two birds with one stone. By doing that, you get to kick those annoying kids off the show and demonstrate BK strength simultaneously. Now, are there positives with this episode? Well, yes. Danny Trejo as the Rancor Wrangler is perfect casting. I am not going to lie. I was so happy to see Danny Trejo in Star Wars. That was a good part of the episode, but his character seems very suspicious though, especially the way he said, don't worry, he'll be back. It feels like that Rancor has already been trained to kill Boba Fett. Now, I might be in the minority with this, but I think Boba Fett should keep his helmet on. I like Tamora Morrison, but he doesn't have the charisma to carry scenes. And by removing the helmet for like 80% of the episode lessens the importance of him taking it off. And it weakens the character's presence and makes him way less intimidating. But if instead they kept the helmet on, it would be more impactful when he takes it off. Anyway, look, we need to see Boba Fett do more in the next few episodes. This is a man who couldn't even open a door by himself. And considering that this show only has seven episodes, we need to start pushing the pace. If each episode was an hour instead of being random lengths, we could develop a lot of these narrative arcs a lot faster. If the runtime is going to be so limited while having a really slow pace, then you probably should have had more episodes. That way, you could flush out Boba Fett being a crime lord of the galactic underworld and on that bombshell, Manix fade out.